Well, good day viewers. Today we have an 03 Highlander here. I did a bunch of exhaust repairs and it was sitting here waiting for parts. And uh, the battery went dead and the customer had just replaced the battery. So I'm checking for a parasitic draw and as you can see I've got, according to the amp clamp, about 295 milliamps, uh, 0.295. And according to the ammeter, which is connected in series in the circuit through a disconnect switch, I got 275 milliamps, but as you can see, it's it's fluctuating. Um, the way I did this was I installed a temporary switch between the negative post and the battery, and I turned the switch on, started the vehicle, shut it off, took the key out of the ignition, closed the door, made sure everything was obviously off, connected my ammeter in series across the disconnect switch, and then turned the switch on. So I've never interrupted the power, and. Uh, I got about 275 milliamps of current draw, which is like two side marker lights on. That would definitely kill a battery in this climate after about three or four days. It was like minus 20 the other day, and the battery actually froze because it was killed. So the customer was able to get a new one under warranty. Uh, I guess he talked quite well to them. So I'm going to check for voltage drops across these fuses see if I can trace it down to any one specific fuse. So I checked all the fuses that are live. These three here, these few here, and these ones are live as well as this 15. These ones are dead. And none of them have a voltage drop across them. So any fuse that has power to it, as you can see, is potentially at risk. And so I've got a voltmeter connected and I'm using two very sharp test probes And you can see across that fuse it's zero. And across that fuse it's zero. So none of the fuses that I have access to I can read a voltage drop across. So it could be one of these main fuses. And you can't test across those conveniently. So I'm going to try pulling fuses. So I pulled all these JK's fuses out one at a time and nothing changed. I also removed the relays one at a time and nothing changed. Didn't bother pulling the fuses out that didn't have power to them. So whatever is causing the draw is not in this fuse panel. Um, I've got the, the door open, but the door jam switch held closed by a pair of vice grips and I'm going to check the fuses under the dash. So I repeated the test at all of these fuses here. Most of the bottom half are live all the time. I didn't bother pulling these two fuses out, but I see this toggle switch in here, and that's for a remote car starter. So we're going to find the fuses for that car starter and disable that. See if that gets rid of the parasitic draw. I still got 275 milliamps. I do have the glove box open, and I see that there is a a push button switch on it and that didn't change anything hmm so I found the fuses for the car starter behind the knee bolster and I disconnected those and that didn't change as you can see we still have 275 milliamps of current draw I notice if I turn this switch off That probably won't do it now because I got the fuses out. I wonder if there's more than one, two fuses in there. Oh boy, I hate aftermarket crap. Hmm. They cut into the wires here to gain access to power door locks and stuff like that well let's continue so I gave up under the dash and I came out here and started to go back old school and I noticed that if I pull this 10 amp dome fuse out it drops to 99 milliamps so that circuit is creating some draw Pull it out, 
Now, is it because the door is open? I don't think so. There's no interior light on. But I also noticed this ECMB fuse, 7.5 amp ECMB fuse. If I pull this fuse out, then the ECM relay starts to cycle on and off. And if I pull this relay out, is being energized on and off and back to 237 milliamps oh I did find some cases where the ECMB fuse was a problem now this doesn't have memory seats when I put that fuse in the power locks cycle so here's a partial schematic showing that ECU B fuse, AC system, anti-theft system, body control computer, door locks, headlights, instrument cluster, interior panel, power windows, um, system warning system, warning systems, ABS system. Well, let's see. So here's another diagram showing that ECU B fuse feeding a instrument panel junction block behind the left side of the dash and out of there it goes four different directions body ECU power window master switch that goes three different directions and this one must go to the immobilizer oh yeah that goes down option connector behind upper right side of dash where does this go it should go to the immobilizer yeah so we got the immobilizer the body ECU and the power window master switch. I wonder what's easier. If we could find this connector and disable this connector, that would be good. So I popped the door switch out. It just pops out of the escutcheon here. Take that one off the off the line, and that doesn't make any difference. We still have 260 milliamps roughly. Okay, I think we're gonna go for the immobilizer. So I managed to get it to drop to 23 milliamps. I'll show you what I unplugged. In behind the glove box, that's the engine ECU right in the middle of the screen and to the right of it, you'll see this connector unplugged. I believe that's the immobilizer, the security system. I unplugged that connector. Now I unplugged this one just to get in there. But I noticed something odd. The nut that holds this ECU in place is missing. And all of these connectors, if you look, they got greasy fingerprints on them. And that's not for me. So I'm going to plug this back in again. Hear the power locks click. And I'm sure the draw is back. Yeah, it's back up to 267. So I'm going to make sure that that's, if that's the BCM or the security system I noticed the security light is not flashing now and it was flashing before and it's plugged in again oh wait a sec I got another connector above it unplugged so I'm back working on this uh, Highlander and I left it uh, parked in the shop here and I noticed if I turn the disconnect switch on the power door locks energize. Also this EFI relay energizes. And this ray relay over here, if I put it back in, energizes. So I'm wondering if there's an input to the BCM, like a power door lock request switch or something like that. 
see that relay's clicking. I'm turning the disconnect switch on. I don't think it should do that, so I'm going to put the scan tool on it and have a look at data in the BCM and see if it shows one of the switches indicating lock or unlock. So I'm scanning the BCM and I come up with this code B1224 door lock switch circuit on passenger front door. So I wonder if that door lock switch is Let's see, we can see the status of that. If that door lock switch is requesting the doors to lock or unlock. Open door warning. Lock operation, park brake switch. Interior lights on with key unlock, fog light switch. Doesn't have the status, open door warning on. I don't have any doors open. Hmm. Key unlock warning switch on. Hmm. I'm going to do some research. So I'm going to try scanning it with this MaxiSys snap on scanner. It wouldn't automatically ID. Let's see if this one will automatically ID. Snap on scanner also wouldn't do a network code scan. Now it is an 03, but still. It appears that the Autel scanner can't read the VIN either. Maybe it didn't support it. Oh, well, it looks like it. Let's see, 2003. Highlander. Yeah. Let's go diagnosis and auto scan see if that pulls up the same code. I haven't cleared that code in the BCM. So the Autel scanner will support a network code scan on this thing. I couldn't find any data parameters in the snap-on scan tool related to the status of the key switches. There's key switches on both doors that operate the door locks, but they both seem to work fine. Turn the key to lock and all the doors will electrically unlock as well as the, the appropriate door mechanically unlocking. I'm going to pick up when this gets to the end. So that was painfully slow. Let's see what it reports. One code in the BCM. Door lock switch circuit or pass on passenger door. Hmm. Well, let's quick erase that and see if it goes away. You would think, boy, this is slow. You would think that if there was a, a problem with the switch, Hmm. Now let's go into the body. Body computer. Controls the wireless door lock security system addition. It controls the interior illumination for the dome lamp, door lamps, power windows, and mirrors. Okay, that's nice to know. It appears something's keeping that BCM awake. And it stands to reason if there's a switch input to the BCM that's keeping it awake, awake. And this is slow. Unable to communicate with the control unit. Huh. Let's try the engine. I got a battery charger on it. Set at 13.5 volts. Shows 12.84 up here. So it's not low battery. Hmm, got no communication now. I'm going to cycle the key. 
Okay, maybe it's necessary to cycle the key. Let's see if that trouble code got erased or not. Maybe that's why the Snap-on scan tool didn't do a network code scan because it's a problem. So it says this B1224 is current. Let's try clearing it. Ignition on, engine off it is, yeah. Yes, clear it. And it doesn't come back. Hmm, there it came back. Let's look at live data. Let's see if this offers any more data parameters than the Snap-on data list. Open door warning. That one was on. And I don't see anything on the dash indicating it. Interior light on. Unlock. I think that's whether it will come on when you unlock the doors. With door key unlock on. Code numbers. Luggage courtesy. Key unlock warning switch on. Well, let's go after this code. I don't see any data parameters here. Snow mode switch, headlamp switch. I don't see any data parameters here that look off other than So what was that code again? 1224. B1224. Okay, I'm going to look this up. So there's no cases of B1224 on Identifix, but here is the diagnostic flow chart. Let's see what the trouble code relays to. Twelve twenty four door lock switch circuit on passenger door. The door control switch assembly, passenger side, front door lock assembly, right hand passenger side, multiplex network body ECU. Open door warning light blinks. I don't see any open door warning light blinking. Door lock switch on passenger door. Well, let's see what the trouble shooting charts suggest to do for this. Twelve twenty four door lock switch circuit. DTC is output when the passenger door unlock switch for key operation of the door control switch is on. But it works. Door control key switch. So that's PML and PMUL. Passenger lock, passenger manual lock and unlock. So I wonder if we can see those data parameters now that I know what the PML and PMUL stands for. It looks like It's one wire and it's a pull down. Well, don't know whether it's a pull down circuit or it's no, that's hmm. Don't know if that's a pull up or a pull down circuit. There's three wires on that door control switch assembly. Stick of key lock and unlock switch. Yet it works. If I put the key in the switch and unlock and lock it, it works. So what do we do here? Do we... It's in connector B10 at the PCM. Or at the BCM. I'm going to see if I can see those data parameters. So this, I believe, is the switch that they're talking about. It's part of the uh, lock cylinder, but you can take the key lock cylinder out by taking out this T30 bolt here. 
but the switch is not on that lock cylinder so it's got to be on the latch down below here so let's remove the door panel and go inside here and have a look at this switch so I got the passenger door panel off nobody's been in here before this has never been disturbed uh, there's a good video on YouTube about how to take the door panel off and I've got this connector unplugged from the latch assembly so three of these wires are for the key switch probably the light colored wires there the two bigger thicker wires are probably for the door lock motor and so we're going to test the circuit here so with that door latch unplugged the trouble code has gone to history read codes again just for the hell of it no trouble codes yet when I look at live data I don't see anything in the data list that's different than it was open door warning says it's on but let's let's see if the draw has gone away I got the the door jam switch held closed with the vice grips let's see if the the draw goes away now so we got 30 milliamps now starts at about 250 and at about 15 seconds later drops to 30 milliamps so that is a problem is within that door switch I think we'll just disable it for now I'm gonna figure out the easiest way to do that because I'm sure that that switch is part of the latch assembly uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna cut one wire or three wires and I'm going to disable that switch. So according to this diagram, there are three wires to it. Purple, purple lime, I guess, and white blue. Go to pins three, five, and six, if that's the proper designation. This one here kind of think it's a ground but I'm not sure well we'll try and disable this white blue wire so here's an inspection procedure before the lock assembly itself so it uses connections 3 and 5 and 4 and 5 which are 3 and 5 and 4 and 5 so looking at this connector here Five is the white black which I thought would be white blue but according to this schematic here it's white black by the looks of it now the P L and the P don't match I don't know what color P is purple that's kind of blue and turquoise or green but measuring the voltage on these two wires I have three and a half and two and a half and zero so the switch obviously grounds this wire, this wire, to that ground. So I'm going to cut this white-black wire with the latch plugged in. And as I plug that latch back in, my draw came back to 276 milliamps. Um, like I said, I'm going to cut that black, white wire with a black tracer. Let's see if the draw goes away now. Yep, 30 milliamps. Okay, so it needs a door latch, and if he wants that fixed, we'll replace the door latch and fix that wire, but for now I'm just going to tape that up so that those two wires don't touch, and that'll fix the parasitic draw. And we're going to put everything back together again. Thanks for watching. So just as a follow-up here, a couple of things I should have done. I should have noticed that when hooking up the battery cable, as you can see, it was turning on the power locks you can see that there is no action now with that uh, switch disabled so that switch was failed in the on position indicating that you were turning the key yet it still responded with the key so I, I can't explain that because I put the key in the door and it would work a lock and unlock um, the power lock still works on that side because I just disabled that micro switch in the key cylinder so 
The other thing I should have done sooner was checked for codes in the BCM or other modules. Um, I hadn't done that because uh, I just didn't think of it at the time. Oh well, live and learn.